Hey guys, if I'm breathing so hard, <laughs> Mr. Late. Wow. Got us late. That's how you start the episode. Yep. That's crazy. But you know what? We're going to get into it. It's episode two of season two. And I got, you know, trainer, black man, educated, UW alum, Kappa, DeAndre. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, <laughs> I, listen, first of all, <laughs> I don't want you to list off my accomplishments with so much just... I know you had the shades on while you were saying it, but mm-hmm. I felt like there was a lot more attitude. Well, that, I think I know, deserve to give you an attitude of how late you were. <sighs> yeah. Touche. We, Touche. Yeah. Touche. You know, okay. let's just start, you know. Yeah. But you, but, you were, but you also were already coming to this show ready to get me I really for some wasn't. reason. I, I really know. wasn't. That's what you told me, but I mean... I mean, you're going to get the smoke. See what I'm saying? That's, what, but that's but, what I'm saying. But not starting off. Okay. I was okay. gonna give it to you in the middle, but I'm just gonna give it to you the whole time now. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay. Your you phone's don't... on D D, right? We can't even do that part. I can't even give you the tutorial. You know, I don't listen, it's okay. Nobody's calling me, it's on vibrate. Mm, you sure about that? Positive. You ain't got no females? Nobody's calling me right now. <laughs> and if they call look, my phone's on vibrate, so And also, he doesn't like Sagittarius and you made us look bad today. Okay. Well, I'll make us look good now that we film it. Oh, that? okay. How about that? Huh? Okay. <laughs> We're going to get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. So, okay, you're from, okay. Are you from Oakland? I am from Oakland, California. Yes. So. Don't try me like that. <laughs> <laughs> from the Bay. Don't try me like that. I'm from Oakland. Yes. Okay. So tell me about that. Like you grew up there until you went to UW. So how was that in Cali? Like as a Cali kid, what is that like? Um, Man, so I'll just tell you in relation to coming here. So mm-hmm. I remember when I first got here um summer 2010 and we were on campus and it was just only the athletes here and so mm-hmm. you know you get you see black athletes you know so yeah white athletes as well mm-hmm. um so it's like oh, okay it's just us here there's no students okay. so when school starts finally the end of september we go on i go on red square for like the first time i'm like mm-hmm. oh i'm excited we got we got school it's it's other kids here now you do cool yeah i get to red square and i'm like What too diverse? There's so like the way the the way my high school football coach described it is exactly what I saw. Um, he described it like this. He was like, "When you get out there, it's gonna be a culture shock." And so I'm like, mm-hmm. "Okay, I don't know what that means exactly." So the illustration that he gave was this. He was like, "Imagine a white piece of paper, and somebody took a pen and just put dots, hmm. a black pen on a, on a white piece of paper. That's what you should expect when you go." to you duck and so i was like okay, okay cool i heard what he said but yeah. i didn't it didn't click until i saw it in red square and i was like okay so majority of us are on the football team got it all right so i never heard of that analogy so before. yeah exactly so growing up in oakland it was kind of the opposite like black everything like all i all i was surrounded by was black people my family friends i had white friends you know white yeah, yeah. teammates stuff like that but for the most part most my comfort in my everyday was black people getting that adjustment here totally different i mean other Mm. thing too is like you know oakland is oakland is the hood college ain't the hood (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. college ain't the hood you know what i'm saying like i mean growing up you know everything every day every single day there was something negative on news about a black man yeah somebody dying you know it was it on on average i remember growing up on average you know the death toll would reach 100 100 plus baby by like october yeah october you know so it was just like You know, that was all it was Mm -hmm. that was pushed, you know. So but for me growing up, I had to support my family, my friends and, you know, coaches and stuff like that who were adamant about, you know, keeping us out the streets. Yeah, staying out. Keep us on the streets. And what we did, what we used for that was sports. So, um, per. But, yeah, no, I mean, like I always, you know, Oakland will always be home. I I don't think that I would have, you know, grown into the person that I am if I wasn't from Oakland. You know, I think that, you know, there's a certain level of just confidence and like you know the way that you look at life is like well you know i'm here in seattle right Mm -hmm. for me growing up i was used to the possibly being in the wrong place wrong time or Mm -hmm. you know gun violence was you know prevalent on a daily basis you know coming here that's not that's not the case it's not the case all the time that's not the case you know what i'm saying so um you know what i deal with on a regular basis here is it pales in comparison to what i'm used to in my mind having to be alert to as a kid every day you know what I'm saying? Mm. You kind of tapped into my next question, kind of, because I was like, do you think that you'll be the person you are today if you didn't go to UW, knowing that culture shock did shift your mindset? Um, I don't think I don't think I would. I don't think so. I really? think I experienced enough um, eye opening things and, and I experienced enough adversity 
um, at UW to where it shaped me moving forward in life. Okay. Um, and I mean, it just positioned me with the reality of what the world was outside of sports. Mm-hmm. You know, the world outside of sports isn't mm-hmm. isn't black owned. You know, we we don't have that much ownership in a bunch of industries. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So. Uh, getting that, getting that, you know, come to, I won't say come to Jesus moment, but it was like an eye opening moment. Like, okay, this is how the world works. Right. This is who operates the world. You know, instead of it being like a situation where it's like, oh, okay, he's white, I'm black. Like, we not gonna fool each other like that. It's like, okay, let's look past that because there's no way that I'm going to get to where I want to get to in life mm-hmm. to get to the level of comfortability if I can't associate and relate to, to other people right to, to people of other races yeah right and, and like you know people be like oh i'm gonna stay over here to myself i'm still here to myself i'm more like okay well we don't have to agree on everything but i'm pretty sure that there's some commonality between you and i per. to where we can work together to mm-hmm. get to both of our common goals to where mm-hmm. we can take care of ourselves and our family and you know ultimately do whatever we want to do look at him trying to preach i'm just hey listen you listen you told me to get on here ah uh-huh. you know Okay. Told me to get on here. You, let me let me get my chair. Yeah, you yeah, you're sweating. You need something. It's a, little, it's a little, it's a little hot. Yeah. You know these the lights about to little, get piping real quick. These lights is a little beaming, but you know. It's I all mean, good. she got to get the pictures correctly. I, let, I said it's all good. This like, is I'm, this is what I go through. Okay. Yeah. Well, since we tapped into it, I know you can't get into the nitty gritty. So you are not the first Greek here. We had James here. He's an alpha. Okay. He was the first. And is the first, oh, gosh. All <laughs> he right. says. All but right. obviously, we can't talk. But leading into college, did you know you wanted to pledge, or that was just something as of being at UW and like adapting to this world that was just came up? Honestly, I coming into UW, I had no desire to pledge. Mm-hmm. Like I really didn't know much about Black Greek life. Mm-hmm. I, like from from my understanding, like from my understanding, like coming into college. Like, the only thing I really knew about Greek life was what I saw in movies. Right, Stump the Yard. Stump the Yard, right. <laughs> it was like, it was like oh, they ooh, they be doing the shows. Yeah. Like, hey, they wear the letters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's black people. Okay, mm-hmm. this is HBCUs. Yeah. This don't happen on the West Coast. This is a yeah. totally different style mm-hmm. of life than I'm used to. And so, for me, it was like, once I decided that I was coming to UW, I was like, oh, okay, well, that life is what I thought that was going to be is behind me. And so, mm-hmm. when I got here, you know, some of my teammates um, were, were, were Greek. Mm-hmm. And so that was like, okay, cool. One of the guys I looked up to, he just happened to be a Kappa. Um, and I like I respected him. Like he showed me the ropes, like gave me the game and stuff like that. And then one of my teammates, he ended up crossing. Mm-hmm. And so then I knew him as well. And so then, you know, things just happened and over right. time I, I just got more and more interested as I, you know, as I stayed For at sure. UW. Um and I learned more about it, you know, and so mm-hmm. um but yeah, no, nah, like at, at at no point was I like, oh, I'm about to go to, I'm about to be Greek. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, that wasn't, hmm. no, nah, that wasn't me at all. <laughs> well, I will say, honestly, thanks to you and another person, I didn't know anything about Greek until I met you. Okay. I think I came around when you actually just crossed. Okay. And I remember I asked you something about it and you kept saying like, uh, like he kept saying a ritual and I was like, what does that even mean? But someone was telling me like he can't tell you because it's it's a brotherhood. It's it's right. You know it's tight knit. Like it's it has to be a what do you call it gatekeeping. Like, exactly. I mean like yeah. to like to to give you another point like to to equate it to something. I'd be like girl code. Like yeah, it's something that y'all don't tell nobody outside the friend group right or the group if right. if you if somebody does find if somebody does know then you know somebody in He's this group told you know what i'm saying so mm. it's like that that's yeah it's like that yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, i started to get more like um knowledgeable about it and i was like okay like I, I admire a lot of people who are in that greek life so you know just wanted to say that i appreciate that i appreciate you know shout out to the noobs you know okay so yeah i see you got your red on Okay. Um. Anyway, I mean, can red just be a, a nice looking? Color I mean, if you me? wanted to rap, I mean, you just you just celebrated your anniversary, right? Well, first first of all, first of all, our colors are crimson and cream. Oh, red. correct me. Just just wanted to put correct that out. Me. Just want to just want to put that out. To I'm sorry. Crimson and cream. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. But yeah, 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 yeah. So, you have experience of football. You have experience of playing in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Now you're training children. Has that always been your passion or the route you wanted to go or was it just Did it just happen? Just happen. I would say it just happened. Like really? if I'm being honest with you. Yeah, no. Uh I had no desire um when I was playing, I had no desire to train kids. You don't like kids? No, I I, I enjoy kids. Like I love kids, but I had no desire to train them. 
Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't even want to. I, I didn't want to have anything to do with coaching altogether when hmm. I was when I was playing or when I was playing. I was like, when I'm done playing football, like I'm done with football. Like I'll just go do something completely different. Cool. What work did you a corporate major job. In? I double majored in political science and communications. Oh, yeah. Look yeah. at you. Come on now. Listen. <laughs> Hashtag more than an athlete. Uh, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> okay. Well, you wanted to be a lawyer or something. Uh, so I yeah. So originally I wanted to be a lawyer, and then I um, when I was at UW, I had shadowed a couple lawyers. Okay. And for me, the biggest thing that I saw with them was that none of them were happy with their life. Mm. Like they loved their career, right? They were successful in their career, but, but their happy. life wasn't. It did. It didn't match up with the success. And so for me, it was more so. It, it became less about what I did and more about the lifestyle that what I did got me, right? And so for them, so so. You know, growing up, people always ask, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to mm -hmm. be? And I was like, shoot, I don't know. But what I do know at a young age, what I did know is that I want to be in a position to mm -hmm. where I can take care of my family and they don't want for anything. The The vehicle at which that happens mm -hmm. may vary because even coming to UW, I didn't want to be I didn't want to go to the NFL. Like really? coming to UW was NFL was not on my radar. That was not my thing. Go to school. done. It was just go to school. My high school because football wasn't even my first love. Basketball was. But I was good enough to get a football scholarship. And I knew my parents weren't going to have to pay for me to go to school. He was a hooper. So, oh, stop playing. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> definitely. Really? I was first team all league. Oh. Yeah. And oh. hoop. Yeah. Oh. I, I, was, I was that. See, that's oh. crazy. That's crazy. You know, oh. haters going to hate. You know, I heard you used to hoop. I am still a hooper. I heard you used to Recognize. Hoop. What am I recognizing? Recognize these feet and how fast I'll do a fast break on your ass. Know that. I don't even think that. And them, and them socks is actually. Don't, um, don't do me. But okay, anyway, go ahead, continue. Like I was saying, continue. Mm -hmm. football wasn't my first love, and so I ended up just trying to come just to get you know free free education. You know, yeah. my high school football coach used to tell us, you know, rest in peace, Coach D. He used to tell us, listen, they could take away you know your athletic ability, they could take away all this different stuff, but uh, what they can't do is take away that piece of paper. And so I was like, okay, well, let me get this piece of paper. And then I got to UW, and I was like, okay, I'm doing all this training, mm -hmm. showing up to all these lifts and all these practices, mm -hmm. and my teammates are getting to the they getting NFL opportunities. So then it was like, okay, well, I know what this dude does every single day. I know his routine. Mm -hmm. We train together. I know what, like, his edge is. Okay, now the NFL is actually within arm's reach. So let me actually go pursue it. It right? wouldn't hurt. It, it, it didn't hurt. Yeah. Right? So then, okay, then fast forward to me get done playing. I was like, okay, I've done, I've gone through everything I've gone through in my experience playing football at a high school, collegiate, and professional level. I want nothing to do with coaching because I saw, the, like, the politics of it, mm -hmm. you know, the decision that you have to make outside of your own uh, your own judgment or your own character to ensure that you got a job to take care of your family. And I was like, I don't want to have to. I know that you see how people are criticizing, like, Deion Sanders, like, every other day. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I mean, first of all, people that are, more times than not, the people that are criticizing Deion Sanders have never been in a position to to impact people mm -hmm. on that level for one or have the financial freedom that Dion has. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you know, Tush. you know, what what are they what what's what's the saying? It's like, you know, lions don't have to worry about the opinion of the sheep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you like people are going to always have an opinion about you. Always. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The the decision that you have to make is do you give in to what they think or do you care more about what you think and the people that you know love and care about you and actually know you think? See, the fact that you're saying that, that's kind of been my vibe. Because a lot of people, like, right now, I even said myself, like, I am so deeply rooted in myself right now that I'm not even really worried about who's absent and who's present. Yep. Of course, I'm paying attention to the ones who's present because I think I need that right now. Right. But the ones who are absent, I'm not even paying you no mind. Or the ones that are talking about me, I'm not paying no mind. Because, you know, you, DeAndre has been there many a times where I just have a breakdown and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Jake. Right. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. But now I, I, I didn't understand then when you was like shy for real, like keep it pushing. But now, I like see it, it. But it take. I mean, but you know, sometimes it takes that that you know, as Sagittarius. I, I don't. Know, I don't know if it's Sagittarius or just me and you. What we have in common is that we can be hard headed by the fact that like we're bull headed. We want to reach our goals, right? But we also know that we can't get there without anybody's help, but we're going to try to do it without anybody's help. Absolutely. So we do we automatically put ourselves in that position. Yeah, a bad position. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But we get out of it, though. Facts. We get out of it. And I and I like, okay, because I like how you 
you know, how you really just took on what maybe God's gift or what was placed in front of you went forward with it instead of just being like, no. I feel like it sounds like to me like you aligned your passion with your purpose. Yeah. And and without even knowing, and this is how it happened. I mm-hmm. I had started training um, because I wasn't making any money at the time. Mm-hmm. I was just withdrawing, withdrawing from a bank account. And I was like, I'm not trying to do that anymore. And then this dude had hit me and was like, yo, would you consider training kids? And I was like, mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't, but yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Right. I went to one of his, I shadowed him in one of his training sessions. He left the next day and went to OTAs in New York. <laughs> and was like, pretty much, hey, pretty much here, you take over the business and yeah. just run it. So... I had two kids at the time, and then I started training another kid. Mm-hmm. Kid I never played receiver before, mm. and so um, in three weeks' time, mm-hmm. um, at one at the end of one of our sessions, his dad comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, man, I just want to say thank you." And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no problem." Right. He's like, "Uh, no, like seriously, thank you. Um, you've been a godsend to me and, and my son, or and to me and my family." And I'm like, "Your family? Like, I only train your son." <laughs> And he's like, no, like the the impact that you've had on him to be able to, you know, he's doing better in school. Um, he's showing up better as, you know, a teammate and his skill set is improving. He's getting all and he's getting this stuff done at home. So thank you so much. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I'm just like, you know, I'm just brushing off. And so then after it was over, I get in the car and I just sat there for like 45 minutes to an hour. I was like, man, like this is the type of impact because it felt it felt Great. good here. Yeah. You know, it felt good here. Like, the like, yeah, I'm making some money, but. This yeah. is feeding me here. So it was like, okay, this made me feel so good. Let me see if I can do this as a business. Yeah. Like, let me see if I could take this seriously. And so then it was just like, you know, I started, like, I literally started from the ground up. Like, yeah. just grinding, reaching out to kids, parents, mm-hmm. athletes, telling them who I was, telling them the service I offered. But even still, people deal, still didn't buy in. They still didn't buy it. They still didn't believe, right? They yeah. was like, oh, bro, you should just go to, you know, the traditional route. Bro, just go get you a corporate job. And then maybe, you know, eventually you can invest and start your passion work and do that on the side. Mm -hmm. But I was like, nah, that's not, I'm not feeling led to do that. And so then it was just like, okay, well, let me see what I can do if I do this full time Mm -hmm. for a month and see what could happen. I did it full time for a month and saw what could happen Mm -hmm. and was like, okay, well, this can pay my bills every month. So then it just, I just kept, just kept Kept being consistent. Just kept, you know, just kept rolling, kept growing word of mouth. And then now it's just, you know, it's continued to grow. Now we're doing camps different states yeah you got you know what i'm saying i so, need a t-shirt thank you i don't know if we have your size I mean, I don't what, know if, what size are you i don't know if we of? have an uh, extra medium um and that just means my waist is small and my booty's fat that's what it means bow thank you um <laughs> so on to the next <laughs> don't try to hate appreciate thank you i was just um, trying to add that up because that math wasn't mathing but go ahead go ahead he's a hater man he's a hater okay so I was looking at this. I forgot where I got it from. But, like, have you ever been in a point where, like, lately I've been trying not to focus on the hurt because I feel like me focusing on the hurt is stuff for me even more. Mm -hmm. And maybe that part is probably a lesson. Like, I don't know. It may sound weird. I'm not saying that mom's passing was a lesson. But it did show me how codependent. I was on her. So besides hair, obviously, still struggling. Um, prayers up, prayers up. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us are. A um, lot of us are. We're now in shops for more than two hours. You remember you used to be in and out. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. I'm, I'm making do. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can. Yeah. I'm doing what I can. Doing mm-hmm. what I can. Yeah, but, but it's, I it's feel nobody like, like her. Nobody like her, for sure. Yeah, I feel like, damn, I was so used to... Mom, mom, I, mm, like my tired, like, no, no, my, like a couple of days for my birthday, my, uh, I left my lights on my car. I don't know why I did that. Come out after work. My car's dead. I'm used to mom making the phone calls. I'm stuck. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like. What am I supposed to do? I really went back into school and I asked my principal, I was like, well, so what am I supposed to do? And she's looking at me crazy. Right. I'm like, I really don't know. So I feel like instead of me focusing, of course I have my days, obviously, but I've been like really just focusing on like, okay, what can I do 
that she will be proud of me about like shy you you uh you filled your tire for the first time ever i uh called triple a for the first time ever or like um i washed blow dried my hair and did my hair by myself like oh you know or like you know so I, I i wanted to ask like have you been in a situation where you're like okay let me just stop making myself suffer and just focus on the lesson or like do you get what i mean you yeah know? yeah um you know i i think the i think the biggest thing is just your perspective on it um mm -hmm. and you know like what's your perspective i mean because you know i've said this multiple times and i've heard people say it too it's like you know the only ills that i'm taking are lessons not losses right so right. it's like what what lesson are you meant to learn from you know your mom's death and i mean and I won't even say it's a lesson. I just think it's now time for you to live. Mm. Like, I don't even think it's a lesson. I think it's like, okay, Shy, like now it's time for you to live. And I can say this honestly, mm -hmm. and I've never even told you this. Um, when you were going through your situation in high school mm. with the grades and you were supposed to leave and go to TSU mm -hmm. and things weren't falling through, I was rooting that they would. Oh. You want to know why I was why? rooting? Because I wanted you to get away. Really? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like that happened the right time because I wasn't ready, though. I but know. I feel you. I know. But let me ask you, when have you ever been ready? Never. Exactly. Because I never had to. Never. I, like, even someone was like, when I went presented. to Chicago, my auntie was like, would you ever move? And I was like, I think since mom's now, I would never leave my mama. Yeah. That, dare, that daring, like, risk-taking part of you that's that you've, like, had dormant is, mm -hmm. like, now it's starting to it's oh, yeah. starting to it, the, the fire is starting the embers starting to build right yeah. but it wasn't there because you were so comfortable right like you've had it good here like you you everybody knew you before you knew them you know what i'm I saying know. so it's like those type of situations how can you grow through those moments because if your mom was always there mm -hmm. or if you always had somebody there how does you grow in that moment that you could depend on you and the only reason that i know this is because and, and i say this all the time is the older i get the wiser my father becomes right the lessons that he was trying to teach me and my brothers mm -hmm. growing up that we were just all oh, dad i don't know what we talking about right, right? I, I get now. to college and, I, and i'm dealing with this stuff mm -hmm. like these real world experiences and it's like when it comes up immediately boom i just think back to that the combo. conversation my dad had and it was like I was like, you know, I could call him right now and be like, hey, Pops, man, you was right about that. Nah, that 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 makes too much sense. That makes too much sense. <laughs> I'm going to just I'm going to just act like I figured out on no. my own and call him like, hey, dad, no, I did this. Ha <laughs> ha. No, Cause I remember because I, re I even remember like when I moved out of the dorms my freshman year mm -hmm. and moved out, moved out in my own apartment for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. and had a roommate. My dad came to visit. Mm -hmm. Right. And like the first thing I said was like he had said something to me. He asked me about something. Well, son, why don't you do this? I said, hey, Pops, listen, you know, I've been waiting waiting about 19 years 19 20 years to ask you this pop pops how many bills you pay here right huh because it was like for me it was like that's that newfound freedom to where hey this is my space i went out and looked for this apartment these bills got my name on it you can't and now say nothing. i i'm you can't say nothing but now like i really have to be i really have to be out here adulting right th th this is this is where you're at now no seriously like, you're it's... actually having to adult and save right and, and save, save and 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 make sure you got this set aside here and yeah. you got you know in this instant okay i know this is the procedure yeah right because it's like now you're really like it's really you no it's really me like the full the full you it, yeah yeah, yeah not i'm the, out here you're, you're you're out here i'm out yes. here you already yes. know the, the trips are booked you see how much i paid for my ticket that i paid a thousand dollars on my ticket to go where jamaica i'm going back <laughs> when april it was a thousand dollars yeah literally oh okay well, i don't know what's going on because my it, friend who's going she's coming from atlanta her ticket was seven well spring break ain't it april no i mean no? everyone's spring break is different but still like a thousand dollars that should be fraud that should be a crime well why don't you just go somewhere else for cheaper well, first of all, we didn't know it was going to be like that. And we already put down in our hotel. So it was a wrap. Oh, okay. I, you, can't I get, you couldn't get your refund for your hotel? I mean, it was no. I mean, we could, but it was like, no, we're already in it. Let's go. Okay. And it's all inclusive. So it was fine. I mean, that's cute. That's cute. I'm, I'm glad. 
I'm glad. Okay. You just Finally, is that is that your first passport stamp? No. Third, second. It will be my third. Okay. Thanks. That's cute. That's what's up. Don't you I say, Mister Traveler. But yeah, no. But have, right. But having to put that money down on that ticket. Crazy. Almost threw up yesterday. I paid rent in that. <sighs> Yikes. Yeah. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. I'm used to mom save me. I'm going out of town next week, so I, I feel you. Hmm. I feel you. Where you going? I'm going to Mexico. You stay in Mexico. I mean, listen, if listen, if I could, mm -hmm. if my ultimate goal is to be able to travel around the world when I feel like it. What you doing for your birthday? You turn how old? 32. Mm. I'm thinking, I, I'll say Africa. Like you I said, ain't planned Africa. it yet? No, I haven't planned it yet. You have seven months left. I do. Uh, no, I'm math. I got, wait, what? Whoa. 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 Hold up. Take mm. a sip. Take a sip. <laughs> sip, sip, sip. <laughs> Nine, Take actually, sip. sorry. Right, exactly. It's a, it's a nice piece of change, but I mean, my thing is I don't move unless I have it. Like, okay. I'm not out here, like, I'm not out here pretending like I do. Like, if I don't, yeah. I'll chill. But okay. if I do, then I'll go. You know what I'm saying? But mm. the other thing, too, is like, I don't, when I travel, it's not expensive. How like, is that? You just plan it out. Like you just plan it out and you and you there's so many different travel hacks and deals. Like for example, I saw one the other day. If you buy buy you only buy your flight, your plane tickets Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If you buying a flight too, or if you're looking up flights, look at it on uh whatever, uh what's the mode on your phone? Uh um Airplane mode? No, not airplane mode, but if you like and looking on the internet, what is that mode called? Wi Fi? No. When you're looking on the internet, if you oh. open up private settings private settings right if you put it if you look at it on private settings it'll give you the actual price why because if you look at it on your regular browser the airlines automatically will bump the price up depending on your location well why didn't you tell me that I, you just i didn't know that you got to pay a thousand dollars till you just said it right now how was i supposed to know that that's why i was asking like why did you pay a thousand but it's okay i got you i got you now that i know you're traveling finally yeah uh, you i'm know, out here yeah, I can now. Right, you, you know, but the thing is, is you could have, you just haven't. Um, you had, you had reasons not to. Now you don't have no reason not to. No reasons. You I don't have, have no, no reason children. not to. You don't I have mean, no. Unless you count Dawn as a child, that's my daughter. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a big baby right there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, right. Your own responsibilities are you. Moi. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of figured. Like, I was like, "Dang!" Like, I'm so used to just, ma. Yeah. But she, I'm sorry, Jake. I've been real pitchy today, huh? <laughs> 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 but sorry, but yeah, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to ask that. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's real. Um, are you a mama's boy? Um, I wouldn't say that. No. I mean, I love my mom, but I wouldn't say that, like, you know, like, my mom is my world, but it's not just my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, I would say my mom and my dad. Like, I have a great love for my mom and my dad. Yeah. What do yeah. you think of mama's boys? I what do I think thoughts. of mama's boys? I have um, my thoughts. As, and now, I would say it depends. Like, yes. Like, I think there's levels. There's levels. I feel like the top tier level, though, is, is out of pocket. Not the, the top tier level of mama's boys. Yes. Okay. I but the like top those, tier level, does that sounds like a terrible thing. It the, does. The lower tier. Okay. Got it. I feel like mama's boys, if they're up here, it's like she he involves her in everything. Okay. Don't you think? I think, like, mamas should respectfully know their place, especially if you have a wife. Now, I don't know about girlfriend. You know, okay. But we talk about wife. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, for instance, you're driving. Mm -hmm. Would you put your wife or your mom in the front seat? I mean, I'm really not tripping on who sits in the front seat. Why do men say that? Because, like <laughs> because these are the listen. Because these are things women think of in advance that carry no weight. <laughs> like women spend so much time. Look, like I've been thinking about. Like women will have a whole hypothetical situation. And be mad about a situation <laughs> that never even happened, but actually feel emotion about it. How? Because it's valid. You, but you made it up in your mind. Like, the whole situation, none of it actually happened. Okay, okay. Like, for example, have you ever have you ever been mad at somebody you woke up from a dream? No. You no. Never. Me personally, no. Okay, but, you have, but the other thing happened, though. What? The creative scenario in your mind and you was pissed off for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that has happened. I know that's happening. Right. Okay, okay. But we, we're simple. We're simple. Like, I mean, you guys who are... cares who's in the front seat? We all going to the same destination. 
But I feel like it matters though. For for what reason? I mean respect. Okay. So if you're driving, is your husband in the front seat or your father? My dad. Now, how does that make sense if he's elderly? If okay. Elderly You're a woman of faith, right? A woman <laughs> of faith, right? The Bible says a, a, a man leaves his father and mother's house and cleaves to his wife and they become one, right? Right. Your number one priority when you leave it's, your parents' house becomes who? Your spouse, right? Right. So why was your father sitting in the front? I just feel like that's my dad. Like, I feel like he'd just be in the front to me. I mean, I don't, obviously don't care who's in the front, but if I had to choose, my dad. But why would you even have what scenario would present itself to where you have to choose the father, the father and the, the father and your husband ain't even tripping. They like we get in the car and we going. OK, like I said, nine times out of ten is probably not going to count. But if there was a time I had to choose. OK, you got to give me a different scenario with mama's boys. Like, OK, or because I feel like you would feel bad if he put his mom in the front. That's what I feel. like. I wouldn't. Honestly, me. I okay. wouldn't even care. OK, me cool. personally, I wouldn't care. So what's, what scenario? What happened with this mama's boy? Like, I, I, have you have you dealt with a mama's boy? No, because I was just talking to my friends recently. Like mama's boys. Like, I love a man that adores his mom and treats her like a queen. That's great. That's wonderful. But I feel like when you start adding her in our business and letting her say what she wants. Like, OK, for instance, let's say let's say. Your mom gets out of pocket with your girl. Are you going to check your mom? If my mom gets out of pocket with my girl? Yeah. You going to, are you going, not, not, I want to say check, but would you have a conversation with your mom like, mom, hey, you got to chill? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I no mean, hesitation? Yeah. We, we got to talk about that. Hmm. Yeah. Because there, cause first of all, there should be no situations where my mom right. should be going off like that. Right. Or, or my wife. No, putting for her sure. in a position to where that's the situation, mm -hmm. right? So we need to talk about that because now, for me as mm -hmm. a husband, my number one responsibility is my wife, wifey, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, family is forever, like yeah, all that, right? Yeah. But role and responsibility speaking, mm -hmm. right? She becomes yeah the priority, right? And the other thing too is that I don't have to live with my mama no more. Okay, I have to live with my wife though. Yeah, you Sleep get what I'm saying. So it's like, right? So it's like you know, like it, he, I, my grandfather used to tell my 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 mom and him this when they was growing up. Like, listen, y'all got to leave here. Yeah. Y'all, I, I got yeah, I got to take care of your mama. So get don't out. think I'm not gonna take care of your mama behind y'all. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like you know, you you yeah. prioritize those things different. You know what I'm saying? Now you know, does your mom your mom does it? Is it? I don't I don't think it's an issue. I don't think he's I don't think it's an issue if you tell your parents your business that's that's not what i okay. i think the issue is when you put them in your business like telling it to them is one thing mm -hmm. but when you allow them to get into your like getting it with you mm -hmm. that's where the issue comes because i can i can take advice from my parents on mm -hmm. marriage why because they've been married right. right but i only take it to an extent because they're not married they're not in my marriage you get what i'm saying i feel you but at the same time i just feel like What's between us and your parents should even know? Because you always hear situations where, yeah, like, for that. instance, like, you're at a family reunion, and let's say you and your dude got into it, and you already told your cousins, and as soon as your dude come in, they're just like, mm. Well, that's true. And, you know, it's I, like, yeah. I say that this is, this is, I think, yes, yes, but I also think about this. I think it's about the picture that you paint to the other person that's the extremely important. I remember in college, I remember college when some of my boys, like, they, we only really had like serious conversations if mm -hmm. the girl did something wrong or if it was an issue, mm -hmm. right? So in my mind, mm -hmm. when that's all you show me, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, bam, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't like her. Like what reason do I have to like her? Now, Because every time you come to me, you telling me something bad, right? It's never, it's never like, hey, man, like she did so-and-so or or even on a, from a woman's perspective, oh, he did so-and-so. It's always you come to me and tell me when, when they mess up. And then so that's all I have versus, you know, my boy, in his mind, he knows all the good she's done and all this type of stuff. So he's like, it's easy for him to have this issue and confide in me and talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, just leave her alone altogether. Mm -hmm. And then he'd be like, yeah, you're right. And then the next day I see him, they all hugged up. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? You're, but it's all about how you portray that person to me uh -huh. determines how I think about them. Because... On the flip side, let's just say we come to the barbecue, right? And they knew we got into it, yeah. but they know you and they know you a hothead. They not gonna be looking at him like, mm, because they know that you putting him through, you putting him through hell, or you didn't 
got him pissed off to where it's like, oh yeah, well, she did that to us too. Hmm. So it's all about how you it's all about how you do it. You know what I'm saying? It's just and you gotta figure out what works for you. I'm about to crack the code real quick. Okay, crack the code. Boy code. You can, Ooh, I'm going to crack it. Crack the boy code. Okay. So since you want to talk about having serious conversations with your boys, if you knew that your boy was treating his girl wrong, would you uh, talk to him about it? Yeah. You would? Yeah, I would talk to him about it. You wouldn't just turn the eye and be like, I don't know. Listen, I'm going to talk to you about it. What mm -hmm. you do after that is what you do. That that has nothing to do with me. That's my take on it. Like, if, I, if I'm going to tell you how I feel about it, Mm-hmm. It did what you choose to do is what you choose to do. Now, do you blame guys that don't hold their boys accountable? Do I blame them? Like, you hear, some, like, there's some friend groups that's out there that don't hold their friends accountable. That's their friend groups. That ain't got nothing to do with me and my friends. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about what other people is doing that don't involve what me and my, me and my people is doing. So you can accept criticism from your boys? I can. Yeah. I'm not above criticism. No. Okay. No. Why? Mm -hmm. Can you not take criticism from your girls? I can take criticism for sure. Okay. I can. You sure? I'm positive. I'm gotten okay. better. See? You had to get better though. You, you Yeah. There was a point. No, it it was no. It wasn't that um they couldn't. It was like you're not gonna have the opportunity to. I'm I'm done. Bye. So you would be done before they could get to the yeah. critique. Well, first okay. of all, I'm not really gonna tell them my business. First and foremost, because okay. I don't want no one's opinion. So I'm not going to tell you, especially when it comes to relationships, I'm not telling you my business. That's just whatever. But if it's something that they see me, I don't know, let's say I'm tripping at a party or something. And you pull me to the side. It's like, I don't want to hear that right now. That's how I used to be. But now, like, everyone knows with me, though, like, you can't come after me, like, right when it happens. Whatever happens, you got to give me a moment. What do you mean? Like, for instance... Someone hit me up recently, wanted to talk about something important. I'm like, give me a day. Like, I don't have the mental capacity right now. Or I'm not in the right headspace to give you a response. Yeah. Isn't that maturity? That's, that. Can we get a golf clap? Like, yeah. is, is it, can we get a golf clap? I, listen, yeah. I am proud. If I had known that that was what you was on, I would have brought an award. That, yeah. Look at you. That that was, that was Come good. You been, listen. Yeah. You've been taking, listen. Them the therapy's sessions. working. Them sessions. They working. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because you know how I used to be. Right. But I that just care. that comes with like emotional intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Like that to, part. To really be like, you know, because I would say that that's something that I've learned that I've been like training myself and being better about is like knowing that I could carry the weight of the world on my shoulders, mm -hmm. but choosing not to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know. I know how hard I can push it, how hard I can grind, mm -hmm. my capacity, how far it reaches. Like, I've tested the limits multiple times. Right. Right? I just don't want to live at the limit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Is it I'm hard not for you to, to be vulnerable? Is it hard for me to be vulnerable? It takes time for me to be vulnerable. I will say that. Really? Like, you yeah. can't just open up? Nah, I'm not just, nah, nah. You know you know what they call us, right? I don't know about us females, but I know what the men. What do they call us? They call you, instead of Sagittarius, they call you Sagittarist. Sagittarius. So, are you a terrorist? I'm not a terrorist. No. You sure. I'm. I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm not a terrorist. So, there's no girl out there saying you hurt her feelings. I'm sure there probably is a woman out there that <laughs> said I hurt her feelings, but I'm not a terrorist. I tell you that. I mean, when you look at the lineup, mm -hmm. you guys do look bad. We. I'm sorry. What? I mean, if when we look at the lineup, we look bad. I mean, there's what does you, that mean? Um, you know, little baby is a sag. Um, Offset, Jay Z. Trey Songs, um, Jamie Foxx. Um, I'm I'm just naming the men. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. Look so what what are you saying? I'm just saying you might be a terrorist on the side. A terrorist? Yeah. Let me let me ask you. Okay. Okay. Now even though those men are who they are, mm -hmm. have have great things not come from them. Oh, for sure. You guys okay. are great people. Okay. You guys are talented. Right. Um. Very smart. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. Don't put this in a Greek like whatever. But you guys are definitely alpha men when it comes to your like masculinity. Like, okay, charismatic. You know? Yeah. Very. Debonair, suave. Oh, okay. Too much. You know what I'm saying? Too, oh, too much. That was those. That, was, that no. was one. No. One too much. Very. All right. But you I, know, I tried. I tried to slip in. Just try to yeah. slip in. Mm. You just wouldn't let me see. But no. you're a hater. So never, is Sagittarius never women or Sagittarius women haters? 
Absolutely not. Hmm. Wait, I, don't I, do that. Don't, don't do that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Do, no. Right. What's no. wrong? So you, you, you're talking about all this Sagittarius men stuff. What about Sagittarius women? And what about women in general, huh? Whoa. What about women? Hold yeah, on, hold on, hold on. Listen, let me ask you a question. Woo, we gonna end the show like this? Okay, listen, listen. If your girl ain't treating her man right, are you getting her on her Absolutely. head? Absolutely. Especially good. if he's a good one, you done lost your damn mind. And, and you're saying that? Absolutely. Okay. Well, how do you feel about women in friend groups that don't say anything about it? That's that's him. Ooh, wow. That sounds like... that's that. Answer I know sounds, what mine. I know what mine. We gonna tell her what it is. That answer sounds so familiar. Hmm. You know, I don't know. It was as if somebody had said that literally two minutes ago. But it, what makes it different is one of us is telling the truth, and I think it's me. Wow. Very. Anywho. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you know, this is a short episode. Sorry. It was, but it was definitely. But a it was hit, a great though. one. Right. The reels are gonna be popping. Come on now. The TikToks are gonna be popping. Popping. Shout out to Jake. Shout out to Layla. Appreciate you, know, you guys for being. You're gonna here. have to come back. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I'll be back. Yeah, For sure. If well, you if you have if you have me back, you know I know you out here doing your thing. You know you got you got all these different guests and celebrities pulling up to your stop, podcast and everything. Listen, stop. I'm just I'm just grateful that you thought enough of me to have me here today. Like, oh. I'm just saying, like you know, oh. there's a bunch of different. There's a million other people. Oh, there is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, see, that's there what is. I do know. But mm-hmm. the fact that I got this opportunity. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Shut up. Any <laughs> he's dramatic. An Academy Award goes to DeAndre Campbell. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you guys for tapping in. We are on every stream, Pandora, the whole nine yards. You know, get them views up. We on Pandora. Pandora, Talk Spotify, uh-huh. Google, Amazon, Apple. Mm. Sound. Ooh, we made it to the other <laughs> YouTube. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Oh, is that eleven different ways that they can? Yeah, but now we need to start making money. Now Ooh. that's that's what we need. To start that's that's at. the one that we need that to reel it in. But yeah. anywho, love okay. you guys, and we'll tap in another time.